an athlete will encounter no crueler foe than time. No matter how many trophies are raised, how many records are set, age always seems to have the final word. Over two decades in the NFL, Jerry Rice found ways to battle back against nature by immersing himself in it. Even today, at nearly 50, he can still be found sprinting the same hills he first introduced to NFL films in 1995, following his third Super Bowl win. Now you're not even out of breath. No, I'm in good, you know. How I'm often do you do this? Uh, every day. Set, go. Tell us about the hill. Why, why did you train and run up this hill? I wouldn't ride a moped up that thing. Talk about the hill. Roger Craig and my trainer, Raymond Ferris, they introduced me to the hill as a rookie. And the first time I, I tried to run this hill, it kicked my butt. And I said, you, I have to go back and conquer that. Because you never want to get into a, a mode of quitting. The hill is about two and a half miles up. 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 And we ran it for time. I, mean, I think my best time was 15 under 16 minutes. What? Two and a half miles up? I mean, you're running and you're pushing hard. And I remember Ricky Waters running this hill with me. And he was dying. Then all of a sudden, my trainer said, Jerry, go. And I could see the look on Ricky's face. <laughs> like, what, he got more? <laughs> 800 meters to go. And I was able to sprint that. So it was about being able to put your body through that pain tolerance. Oh! And in that fourth quarter, even if I was tired, I was able to fight through it to make that winning catch for that touchdown. Throws long for Rice down the sideline. He's going! Oh! He's going to 30, the 20, the 10! Touchdown 49ers! A 77-yard touchdown pass to Jerry Rice. And I think that, that was the thing that separated me, uh, you know, from so many other uh, different players. There were also more conventional workouts that were just as intense. I never wanted anything handed to me. I wanted to prove myself every year, and that's why I would come to camp early. I know you did. I was always there, and I was ready to go to work, and I took pride in what I was you doing. You did. I mean, my first camp in Rockland, we had the rookies come in first for four days, and I didn't want any veterans messing up the rookies' heads. I'm sorry, I wanted you to be there. You came before the rookies came. <laughs> you were there three days before the rookies came. It was like, get out of here, all right? Somebody else needs to practice. Because I was ready to go. I had worked my butt off during the off season. Now it was time to go out there and show everybody that, hey, look, I deserve to be the starter here. And even in year 12, still, I wanted to earn that. You'd come out early for practices, join the special teams. But, but it was important, Mooch, the reason why is because of the special teams. Yeah. That's important. And well, I know, but those, even you, if you weren't on the special yeah, teams, so you, you were still the, out there. Yeah, you wanted those guys to know that. I would go to special teams meetings. I would sit there, even, even though I was not on it. But I wanted to know, those guys to know how important that was. If, if I don't prepare the right way, these guys, they're not going to prepare the right way. So it's all about setting a standard. And if I'm there working, grinding every day, they're going to be like, wow, you know, this guy, you know, this guy's been around for 15 years or more, and he's still working. You know, he doesn't have to do this. Why is he doing this? But it was very important to set that example for those guys to let them know that uh, you might only get one opportunity. Do you still crave that? Oh, I miss it. You do? Every day. Could you still play Jerry Rice? Yeah, I could. You could? I'm ready to go. I'm, I, I can run that uh, go route. I can run that post. I can run whatever because uh, I'm, I'm still doing it. You're still training, huh? Still training. I, I loved it. I loved it.